Hi guys, and now I feel like someone's behind the screen, Michael. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. I'm really happy you're here. You know, Thank I've you. never we've I'm, never really had a conversation before, well, so I'm not. excited. In all the years we were doing this, we've never sort of really crossed paths or sort of talked. Yeah, it's incredible. So yes. I'm so happy you're here because I really do this as a give back, and I want actors to and artists and all 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 aspects of the industry to have that connection to get to know you to get to know everybody so when they get to when they come in the office for you or they have a zoom meeting with you they'll already feel like there's been another connection so yeah it's, i think that's super important too i think it's especially now during all this craziness of the past six seven months i think connection is really key to everything i think we crave it we crave it more. We crave it more than ever. And I think when it comes back and people connect again in a room, it's going to be such a grateful. If that happens, Sherry, if that happens. Oh, I mean, a year, but it will happen. In terms of in terms of auditions in a room? Yeah. You don't think so ever? I, I think it's going to be so super limited now. Well, for a while, but you don't think it's going to go back? I don't think, I don't think it's going to go back to the way it was, no. What do you think? What do you see it as? Uh, I, I definitely see it as a lots of more self tapes. I think if anybody goes into the room, it's going to be sort of the final stages of something where people then can get to sort of meet the personality. Um, you know, I've been saying this for a while. I've been, I've been independent my whole career as a casting director, but the past five years, I actually have never had an office space. I've just rented it out. And I've cast everything I've cast from my home. And yeah. I'm talking about movies that shot. Like one year I did seven movies outside of LA that shot in two in Boston, two in Atlanta, one in Nashville. And I'm talking one-liners up to, to main leads, all cast from here in West Hollywood. From your home? From my, from my couch, I was watching oh, wait a second. Judy one second and then I was cast in the other second. So. But wait, so you, <laughs> so you were, so you never had in person. It was always off tape. It's been off tape. Mm -hmm. So then this hasn't that been that big of a deal for you? This, re I, no, um, it, it really hasn't. Um, I, I've, the project I've worked on, I've sort of almost prepped the producers and directors saying that, you, you know, I mean, I think it really, it, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, I see the, the, down, the downfalls of it, not seeing a person, not feeling that energy in a room. However, you do kind of get what you get on the screen then too, and you get to see that really. But does it does it make you question? You know, when when an actor comes in the room, you get a sense of their personality. You get a sense of how they take an adjustment. You get a sense that they bobble because on a tape, you can do it twenty five times to get it right. So that trust factor, I think. I kind of get a. I mean, listen, I'm doing this a long time, and I kind of get a sense even from even from a self tape whether or not that person sort of how confident they are, how they feel about it, how they feel about the material. Mm. Um, if something else is going on, I can get a sense. And I gotta be honest, in some of the films that I put together, even the one-liners were some of the best things, some of the best casts I ever put together, some of the most seamless casts. And, and so even, if, and even like when I wasn't in, um, it was Nashville or something, we had some country music star who just bagged out the day they were supposed to be shooting. And I literally got another country music star there in an hour because the way technology happens, it just happens. How, but how did that happen? I just start, you know, calling all the contacts and all the contacts and like, you know, get them down there in an hour and just give me the address where they need to be. I'll get somebody down there. It's crazy. So yeah. let me ask you, so since you've been doing on tape for so many years, is it just cast off tape? Do you then have a in-person meeting? Pre well, I, I listen, for as much as I love casting, I sort of don't like to work so hard. So I try to, <laughs> I try to keep the cast and on tape down to a minimum. And I make sure that my director is also depends on your director and how confident they are in their abilities and whether or not they can see something and someone they can walk, work with off of the tape. Right. Um, for the most part, it's just off the tape. And not even callbacks on the tape. Not even callbacks. Not even callbacks. That's incredible. That's easy. That's it's easy. easy, but it's but you have to be very then discerning. I mean, you really have to sort of discerning and you have to put a lot of people on tape. You have to. There's a lot of things you have to do in order to sort of, it's not, it's a lot of work, but it also ends the complication. I've always had all this stuff too about lots of, lots of callbacks, people calling back. And it's like, guys, it's, 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 you're not, you're not reinventing the wheel. These are mm -hmm. actors. You've seen what they've done. You're capable of doing it. They, you know, you've, if you love them for some reason, the first couple of times, 
you know, you're going to love them. You're just going to love them again. I think you're trying, you're looking for something not to like sometimes when you do a series of callbacks. And that's, and that, I don't, I don't think that's productive at all. But I think this is more for independent films because don't you think in television you have to have callbacks to? Oh, well, you do, but, but you have callbacks mainly to satisfy all the other chefs in the, in the kitchen from the and there's network. a lot. And there's a lot. Um, although there are, there are shows and there were times where, you know, I've, I remember it's sort of at the end of Roswell, it was like my executive producer who was fantastic, who just did not like casting in terms of just physically being there. And mm. he had, you know, he didn't like to meet that many people all at once. It was kind of a weird, you know, weird with some social anxiety. And he was just like, yeah, do you like them? And he said, right, let's just go hire them. Like that was sort of at the end of the day, you know. I think that's happened. actually a great attitude to have because it, it was fantastic. It, it was so easy and, you know, we got great actors. And, yeah. You know, it's it's it, it's a lot of trust. I mean, I, you know, it, 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 I at some point over the all the years I've been doing it, somewhere somehow the trust of actors and people's instincts sort of wanes. So now everybody has to weigh in with an opinion, mm -hmm. um, and it's so a little frustrating. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I was blessed um, to do a TV show called Cold Case for four years where the, the, the crux of that show was the casting. And we had a lot of matching and it was a lot, it was a lot, a lot of work. Right. And, and God bless the network, CBS and the, and the production company, Warner Brothers and, and Bruckheimer, they kind of let us alone. Wow. And, and um, we, of course, you have to sort of send everybody up for approval, you know, to make sure everybody's okay with it. But I think I hired close to, you know, 2,500 actors in those four years that we That's did insane. it. And I think I only got two people spit back saying, no, no, we don't, we can't hire them. And it was never any at all about performance. It was always about the matching. You know, somebody said, no, somebody is suing the the studio. We, we didn't know that. We, so we can't hire them. Yeah, some weird, something weird like that, you know. So, so I was never used to this whole approval process for a long time. So when I, stopped doing that show and I went into a, a various other projects, I was like, why do, why do you need to weigh in? Like, I was, I was, <laughs> it was shocking. Well, what, about do you think, what do you think that trust factor was with Cole Case that they allowed that the network didn't get so involved? Why did they trust because you? Because the so casting was so difficult and we had a match. We had to find two actors to play the same character at different ages. Oh. The, the, the particulars of cats in that show it mm -hmm. was a major problem and they didn't want to get in the way because it was it was already difficult they were they didn't want to make it more difficult mm -hmm. because well, then we never, never we never get that cast we never get that show cast if everybody you know so we would you know our me and our producers and i had great leadway in terms of who we hired and why we hired them and you know uh and really never any sort of and if there was a major major character that recurred they would weigh in a little bit more but mm -hmm. never to the point like yeah you can't hire that person well you've been really lucky why casting why did you go into casting uh, no never wanted to be an actor god bless you i don't know how you guys do it <laughs> i could never do it i just kind of fell into it i just i wanted to be in the industry i um sort of writing i'm actually back at writing i'm i'm, I'm actually uh a writer as well as a casting director now, so uh, oh. and careers are going both well. Knock on wood. Um, well, wait a second. What are you writing? Are you writing film, or television? What do you? What do you? I've written oh. um, of the four things I've sold. One was three were movies. Wait a minute. Hold on. I got to think about this for a second. Three were movies. No, actually, yeah, three, two were independent films and two were TV movies. Uh, let me ask you: Were you the casting director for these? Uh, for two of them. Hallmark has their own in-house casting director. They were they were Hallmark projects themselves. They weren't bought, bought, bought by Hallmark. They were commissioned by Hallmark. So they had their own internal casting person. Well, this is interesting. Penny, is it, Penny Perry, and she's very good at what she does. So this is interesting to me because can you let the people listening, the actors and writers, sure. how do you sell something to like a Hallmark? Now, I am the Hallmark? wrong person to ask that. I mean, I really am. I, I, I I, I've, I, don't, I don't have an agent. I've never looked for an agent. I've sold four projects sort of on my own, which has been very, very lucky. Uh, to sell to a Hallmark, the first one was uh, my uh, writing partner at the time, uh, still is actually, 
um, but he knew a producer who produced the Hallmark. Um, and this is actually a pretty incredible story for all you struggling writers who can't happen. Um, <laughs> no, and, and this is, and, 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 and so he just, he, he just asked, we, we just asked if we could send him some, some ideas for you know, some movies. He says, yeah, great, it's whatever you, whatever you want. So we sent him on, I'll never forget, it was like a Thursday, we sent him like six ideas. He called up on Friday. He says, well, you know, I don't know this one, I don't know, but I really like this one. So I'm going to go just present it to Hallmark on Monday because I've got a whole bunch of ideas I'm pitching over to them. He pitched them on Monday. On Tuesday, he calls me up and says, they're going to buy it. It's like, it's just an idea. There's no script. There's no outline. It's just an idea because they, they need content really badly. They spark to this idea a lot. Um, Amazing. And by, and by the following Tuesday, I had signed the deal to write the script up just literally a four, li four line idea. A, a four line idea? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a paragraph. It was two paragraphs, maybe. So maybe it was eight lines. That's um, unbelievable. Wait. So how important are connections? Because if your writing partner didn't know this person, you'd be invisible. Yeah, uh, yeah listen, connections and uh, connections are even more important in writing than they are now. Um, I found that out pretty quickly. Um, yes. and, but it's but it's also true, you know, it's connections. It's I hate the word networking, but it's it's networking. And I and I'm speaking as both uh, for writers and for and for actors. Mm -hmm. Don't look at that. It's just it's just expanding the the base of people you know. Well, and there's nothing wrong with seeing people you know and telling what you do. Like I, I listen, I'm a shameless plug for myself. If I meet somebody there, I'm like, somebody's go, I'm doing a movie. I'm like, well, who's casting it? Yeah, you know, I asked right up, and not in a you know obnoxious way, just sort of in a fun way. And I'm like, you know, they, sometimes people go, I you know what, I don't know. And other people, oh, I use, you know, I don't know, I use uh, name a casting director, De Deba Quilla. I'm like, oh, great, that's great. And then it's in as well, but it's, you know, you, you. You don't ask, you don't, you don't get, you don't receive, you don't put it out there, you don't receive. One thousand percent. If you don't ask, it's always a no. If you do ask, it's a possibly yes. I'll, I'll tell a quick story. And I, I know if I go on, we can cut this out if you don't like it. But anyway, <laughs> but what you know, I always tell actors too, no one's going to come knocking on your door to be in a movie. They're just, they're just not. It's not going to happen unless mm -hmm. your neighbor is help, happens to be a big film director. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I, I, I don't like, I, sometimes I'm really bad about socializing and getting out there. And an old boss invited me to dinner. I declined. Um, and then the day of, I was like, you know what? I'm really not doing anything. I should just go out. You know, what am I doing? So I, so I said, asking the invitation still open. He said, yes. I went there. I, I um, started talking to um, a woman and um, we were talking and we were getting along. We we're talking about everything, but, you know, sort of the business. And all of a sudden she says, well, what do you do? I said, I'm a casting director. She says, oh, great. Like, who are your two favorite independent film actors? And at that time it was, I said, Sam Rockwell and Kate Beckinsale. Oh. And she was like, oh. Oh my God, I love them. She goes, she goes ah, I love you. I want, I want you to cast my movie. And I said to her, yeah, you got a movie? I said, the guy who bags the groceries at Ralph's, he's got a movie too. She said, you know, she said, you don't believe me? I says, no, I won't believe you until I have a check and a script. And the next day, she delivered me a check and a script. Unbelievable. And it's been a long-standing relationship I've had for three years. And I mean, three years for um, over 13 years, so close to 20 years. Um, wow. And... I've cast all her movies and I mean, just literally on a business sense, you know, I cut myself out of a, if I didn't go and I didn't put myself out there, I cut myself out of a big chunk of money, even just on a, on a very. And doing you know, what you love. And, and doing been, what you right, love. Right, right. But I, and, I, and I gained a friend, I gained connections and, you know, so you have to really put yourself out there. You really, really do. And I, and I feel like you put yourself out there because you love what you do and you believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you have, if you're an artist, you have a story to tell and, you know, whether you're hired to tell that story or just connecting and meeting, yeah. you know, like you or somebody, you're telling a story and it's so fun. And, 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 and you want to be around other creative people when you're yes. somebody who's creative, you know, I never, I never look at a meeting or don't look at an audition as sort of a, you know, a way to get the job. Look at it as a, an audition as a way to meet new people. Yeah. And to do your storytelling. And to story telling. Your... The good to meet new people. Okay, I met that person. You know, some yeah. people you're going to get along with, some people you're not. It's the way of the world. 100%. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Just that yeah. there's something that triggers in you and it just get. that's the thing. What yeah. is it about you when you are watching a tape? Because okay. everybody has different opinions. Do you like a lot of um, behavioral life? Do you like to just be really close in like oh, this no. and okay. just talk? 
do you like to live the life of the character? I like to live where? the life. I like, I'm a big body moving person. I like people yes. the voice. I love, I love movement. I love, I think, you know, every part of your being from head to toe should be in, in, in mesh, immersed in that character. Um, I like to see if they make sort of you know, the way the characters sit, how they change, all that stuff I think is super important. So um, I'm so glad because let me just interject. There are people that come to my studio who have been at other studios and they say, don't move. And I just oh. want to scream because if you don't move, you don't live the life of that character. There's not a chance you're storytelling, not a well, chance. Well, I tell you, I, I tell you I, I, a funny story how that sometimes, you know, can shoot you in the foot when you don't do that. I, I had um, a Jim Cole case and we, you know, had an actor who was playing sort of a, a guest lead and as a high schooler he was a track and field star and then in one of the scenes just took place at his track meets and his parents were arguing or whatever i don't seen but yeah you know. and and he's actually pretty famous right now he's done stuff and are we going to say his name or no, no, no. okay okay fine but, Go ahead. But the producers calls up and call me up and says he can't run I'm like what they're like he can't run <laughs> like, what do you mean he can't run? Everybody can run. He goes, well, apparently not, because he really can't run well. He just, he looks really awkward, you know? And, you know, I said, well, I didn't, I didn't plan on doing a running test. I just assumed everybody ran, you know? And, <laughs> and, and you know, we, we didn't get a sense of his movement in, in the audition itself. And so it was, you know, and then you're walking. I was like, yeah, he actually kind of walks a little awkward too, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but did he get and, the part? Well, this is after he was hired. This is when he was, they oh. were filming. Oh, I see. And so we like, I was like, well, you're gonna have to shoot him from the neck up as he's running because, <laughs> you know, and they did. That's how they had to do it. That's so funny. So obviously in the audition, he wasn't running. So no, no one... right, right. But even in the audition, it was very, it was a very stationary audition. So we didn't get a sense of his body movement or anything. Interesting. You know, so... so you're a big believer like I am, a behavioral yeah. life, environmental life, mm -hmm. emotional life, and don't do it to please the person yeah. watching. No, 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 no. That's, that's the wrong way to do it. I always say the most important thing in any audition is not how I feel or how the director feels. It is the most important thing is the material you have on the, in your hands and bringing that to life. And how that's, do you feel about actors? Go ahead, I'm sorry, what? That's an actor's job. It is an actor's job. Yeah. But there are, can you see it in tapes when actors are trying to do it for the oh, way that you totally, think? Totally, totally, totally. It, it, it's, yeah, it, that, that comes to me that comes through. So I definitely can see that. And I don't particularly like it. I feel like you're giving me that. I mean, listen, the old adage is true. A lot of people don't think it's true, but you know, I'm actually looking at most, and I think most good cast directors are looking to see what you bring to the table as well. Because don't forget, I'm looking for you to be that character. I'm not looking for you to, to act that character. I'm looking for you to be that character. You have to live with that character. So I want to see what you bring to the table as well. Because you may open up my eyes about something I never realized. Exactly. Now let me ask you this question. When actors walk in, Okay, mm -hmm. or they put themselves on tape mm -hmm. and you ask for a slate, which I personally think is so dorky. I don't like it. But if you ask for a slate and sometimes you need it because you want to see the whole body, you want to just right. make sure you have their name. And I understand. But if the character is, has an accent or, or you have an accent, but then the character doesn't, do you slate as yourself or do you slate with the essence of the character? Tricky question. Yeah, I would slay it as yourself because I think that's a moment. But a bit, a bit, a bit, you know, if you were gonna do an accent and you don't want people to know that you're putting on the accent, maybe put the slate at the end or you know have it as a separate attachment. Sometimes. Do you think that hurts you though? Because a little secret, nobody knows this. Years ago, years ago, twenty plus years ago, when I was acting, I had I was testing for a show and it was a New York character. Okay, real New Yorky, and I went in with that New York accent. I lived in it i left with it and to the they still don't even know they don't even have a new york accent so sometimes i feel like that that's you're true. that you're really enamored with the work and then you go oh wait a second that's not their real voice so now i don't believe well, that i tell you I'm, I'm the opposite i'm like oh that's not their real voice wow that was great they really okay. tricked me like you know oh. that's really awesome okay great. That was, what movie was it that vera formiga did that the director who directed that movie i did a pilot for him he i think he was telling me that Vera Farmiga did some movie with, where she played a Czechoslovakian woman who was sold in sex slave in, in New York, and she had a you know thick accent, and mm -hmm. the whole crew had no idea that she wasn't Czechoslovakian until like halfway through shooting. Then all of a sudden, wait, wait, what happened to your voice? I have to agree. I think 
I yeah. was great. I mean, I love to be fooled because because if I, if you don't, then I'm looking I'm looking to hear the, how the accent is. Mm. You know, if you just come in the way you are, I'm accepting that's the way you are. Yes. What are yeah. your What are your um, pet peeves? I'm also bad about. By the way, I'm also kind of bad at accents. Like I sort of don't like. Uh, that's the one thing I'm like. I can't tell if that's good or not. Like I'm just. <laughs> so. I'm really bad at accents. I am laughable. Performing them or listening to them. The what? Performing them or listening to them? No, performing them. Oh, I'm okay. not a performer anymore, but like even if I'm making fun of an accent, you know, oh. it's, I'm just the worst. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, but do you have pet peeves because you're not meeting actors in the room? Oh, yes, God. you just rolled your eyes. So tell us. Well, listen, pet peeves are, you know, listen, all pet peeves are subjective. So it doesn't of go course. for every director. And that's why I'm asking uh, you because each person. Minor, minor, minor props. I just don't like props. I think my I, I have a very short attention span. Um, and when I see a prop, my attention goes right to the very, um, to the prop. And I- What kind of prop? Like food or- Well, listen, I mean, it's not food. I listen, I've in, in the room and on tape, but in the room, I have everything from a live snake to a real <gasps> gun to food being brought in, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you know, I had one guy literally, it was a dinner scene. He laid out an entire dinner <laughs> on the floor with drinks and peas and chicken. And I was just like, and I was fascinated. I'm like, okay, how far is this guy going to go with this? That was sort wow. of happening. And I couldn't pay any attention to what he was doing at all. Oh my God, that's I'm so funny. Fascinated but, by the bizarre, you know. But, but, but what if it's a dinner? What if it's a dinner scene and you're putting yourself on tape? You're not going in the room. It's very different. Because you do want to tell the essence, but do you think that's Yeah, too but you know, I just think it's, it's too much. It's just, again, again, in a self tape, the idea of any self tape is to make sure the focus is only on you. Don't let anything take away from the focus of you. Right. That's includes your background. For some reason, I've had a lot of people shoot self tapes in in the front of a bookcase, and I'm automatic. And again, this is just me, but I'm automatically looking. Well, what books are they reading? What, do they do that? <laughs> that's where my mind's going sometimes. Um, and so anything that sort of distract, even sometimes even like patterns on your shirt that's why i don't like wardrobe that's lots of patterns because i'm just like wait what's going on where did they get that shirt like you know if it stands out you know cell phones and, and water bottles are just sort of part of our everyday existence so they're not as obtrusive yeah um as other props but however i did have I'm one gonna take a sip. Actress, there you go i just had i had one actress do um a scene for me and she brought out her water bottle and in the scene she drank it so she drank it from the water bottle and the, the the bottle itself was shaped like a flask. It was clear, and I was just like, "Oh wow, those are really really cool." I want to ask. Can I, can I can imagine them mapped out in my refrigerator? I got to need when she's done. I got to re remind myself to ask. And all of a sudden, I'm lost in that thought. I'm not paying any attention to what she's doing, and it's all because of that water bottle was shaped like a flask. Mm. So you have to be very very careful because very. You're, run, you're running to idiots like me who have a very short attention span. <laughs> A lot of people do. A lot of people get sidetracked by a lot of things, but I think it's the actor's job. I believe there should be a little bit of behavior, a little bit. Cell phone, water, maybe a piece of lick, something that you can have in your hand. Maybe you're writing something, but that tells you. Yeah, but it's not intrusive, right? If it's incorporated within the scene, incorporated within the character where it's so not intrusive. Yeah. You know, and, you know, most actors are smart. I think they can tell the difference, hopefully. I think so. They're not going to bring out their steak. That's why it's also very important to get into the, how you begin an audition because you have to grab that viewer's attention right off the bat. Yes, so tell I, us. To be honest, I, I, any caster that tells you anything different, they're lying. Everybody at some point goes like this. Start the tape and I'm done. I, I know. The opening moment is the most crucial the moment. The opening moment is the crucial moment. How are you going to... So that's why I always think everybody should, you know, when you do the self-tape, you, know, you do it to the one person that you're that's watching it. Just don't, you know, you know, make sure you connect with them somehow, some way. Um, it's so important. So, and are you a type of office, like I've coached so many actors and sometimes they get called in or they have to put themselves on tape. It's one scene, which I'm, that's great. Show the essence. But sometimes there's like four long detailed scenes, which first of all, they don't have enough time to work on. Secondly, they're still on the, on the page and then they're feeling rushed. How many cast do you watch all those scenes? If you had, um, so um, I'm, you know, as, as time goes by, you know, when it was not uh, more and more self tapes that come in, the less and less I watch all of them, I'm pretty good about sort of instinctually getting somebody likes it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do is I'll pick out key moments within the tapes or the scenes themselves that I know I want to hit that I want actors to see if they hit and then I can tell them if they're really like of this character if they really are the characters. So either I'll fast forward to it or you know, if it comes like you know, a minute into the scene, I'll wait for that, that marker to happen. Um, sometimes it's how they come right in. I can tell right off the bat, I'm like, oh, or go, yeah. oh my God, that would be interesting. Um, in, in terms of length of diet, I, I, I'm actually pretty good about giving people time with material because I do think time with material is extremely important. I don't understand this whole idea about, you know, and I've done it. Um, I don't like to do it, but I've done it, but I don't understand it of, you know, giving people all these scenes to do for the next day. Like mm -hmm. how, how do you expect people to be good? How do you, how do you expect oh, that? Oh. Um, so usually if I have a lot of scenes, like in this last movie I just cast, we gave people like, you know, at least a week with it. To sort oh, of, that's incredible. Just because, you know, you want to really get, you really want to, because it's self tapes you really want to start weeding through the people that are really right yeah. for it or not. And that's a, that's a good way let's, to it. Let's talk about this movie you just cast. Can you okay. tell us about it? And uh, then you cast I that. Know, I think I can. I mean, it was, uh, it was a, a Christmas movie, but it was a Christmas movie with um, LGBTQIA lead characters, two men, um, and it was a bigger budget for a bigger studio. Vi I can say Viacom, I guess Viacom, yes. Okay. Hired from them, they, you know, because I don't think the official press release is not out yet. Oh, then we can't um, say the name, but yes. I won't say the name of it, but it was, um, it was a much more grittier sort of indie feel kind of mm. Chris, uh, Christmas movie that they're gonna. And did you do, when you're when you're looking for roles, are you looking for name your people first, or you do oh, yeah. you open it up? Of course, of course. I mean, I you do open it up because you never know what you're gonna get, so you yes. know, you know if a name's gonna take it. Um, actors have to understand that yes, especially if leads of movies, most producers and or studios are are gonna want the name of your people because that sort of guarantees them at least maybe more accessibility, people, more people will take note of it, maybe more people will see it. It's not a guarantee, it's not a set rule, but it, that's a possibility, so they're gonna take that chance, especially now when there's so many avenues of, of viewing material now. And, and, and <sighs> so if you can get a name, the better. However, I don't, right off the bat, I'm also looking for just good actors as well, because you never know. And you never know, I've gotten to be before, the, you know, the day before production, all of a sudden somebody pulled out I don't lead actors. I can actually say I don't really care. Um, I did a movie years and years and years ago called Till the End of Time. Um, that was the first major movie about Georgia O'Keeffe and mm. Linda Fiorentino was uh, was going to be um, Georgia oh. O'Keeffe, and she was attached to the very you know nice director, a little skinny, but nice director named Merrick, you know, whatever his name was. Um, and anyway, because she had done a movie with him, and they got these things, and it was then I got Ben Kingsley to pay, play up with Kid Stiglitz, and it was a whole big thing, and like. I get a call, we were supposed to start on Tuesday in Chicago. I get a call on a Saturday. I'm at Santa Anita racetrack with my father. <gasps> and they say, we have to replace, <gasps> we have to replace Linda. I'm like, Linda who? They're oh. like, Linda, Linda. I'm like, you mean the lead of the movie? Oh. They're like, yeah. Can you get somebody up here by Tuesday? I'm like, you're not gonna get, well, what about Holly Hunter? You're not gonna get Holly Hunter to sort of drop whatever she's doing on a Saturday and get on a plane on a Monday. And it's just- later ruin your day at the racetrack. Oh, right, 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 right. She just she disappeared, she pulled out. Wow. And just, they couldn't find her for like two weeks. What did you but do? That, what did she do? Now, what did you do? How did you get the- Well, person? we just tried to get, but then by the, but by the time that we, we had a push, and we had a push at least by that time, like two or three weeks oh. at least. And then by that time, Ben couldn't do it because he had a very tight schedule and then he pulled out when he figured out that was gone and then the Germans were like, it was German money and they were like, ah, forget this whole thing. The whole thing fell the apart? Whole thing. That's so upsetting. Yeah. So when you have a uh, indie film or a big budget film, so you get the script and you're giving actors a week, how many weeks of casting time do you actually have before the shooting usually? Depends on my deal. Depends on yeah. how much I love a project. You know, I just I did a um, I did a movie that's at the Toronto Film Festival right now. It was but, well, okay. that festival right. was at the okay. uh, It's a great indie movie called T Like a House on Fire about postpartum depression and it was an amazing lead character. And it was mm -hmm. just you know so rich and 
I knew that it was going to, because there were also the particulars of the film and how much it was going to take out of actresses. And, you know, a lot of actresses are afraid to go down that road because mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's personal for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew it was going to be a while. It wasn't, and they really needed help and guidance in casting the lead. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like this. So um, I stayed on that movie a long time. Oh, well. Just oh. for like, I started that in like in October, September, October, and they didn't start shooting until June. Wow, wow. Because I knew, and listen, it's not, it wasn't like I was working on it every day. It was like, oh, I'm an offer, you know, this day we wait for that person, and they pass, and we go on to the next person. So it's not like a lot of work, but it's, it's a lot, it was a lot of massaging in a very good way and creative conversations wow. with the director about direction and whatnot, and who, and educating him on actresses and whatnot. So. But that's nice. Do you it's feel great. like there's a difference, a difference of pressure when you're casting film versus television? There, there's so much more pressure in the pacing of television. Yeah, but I enjoy that as well. I mean, I, I, I enjoy doing both. And I was lucky that in my career when I started the first, my first big year, my first year act, well, which is second, I don't count the first year with a bad cable show, but like my first year of casting was uh, Roswell. Um, I got that, the original Roswell on that same year, I had two films go to Sundance. So I was lucky enough, even back when there was really no crossover that I was, I'd done, got success early on in both film and television. So I was, had the ability to sort of do both. And I always was very, very conscious about doing both. Even mm -hmm. when I was doing like two or three TV shows at the same time, mm -hmm. I always did indie, indie film, always. And I don't care if they pay me at that point, there was no union, if they pay me like a thousand, I was like, I got this money coming in from there. I don't, because I think that's, Indie films at that time, it's unfortunately fallen off a little bit by the wayside, but we're sort of the lifeblood of really, really cool actors and, and, and really just sort of finding some really amazing talent. Do you think it's changed for indies? Because it feels like oh, this- yeah, I, I think the, the indie film in the film market is, is essentially not dead. I mean, I, indie films and theater, just forget it. It's really not gonna happen that much. Oh, really? After, well, yeah, after forget it for now. And now and, you know, who, I mean, because all, again, with the accessibility of all these streaming services, I mean, when was the last time you really sort of, most people got in the car and drove to a movie theater to see like, you know, a, a, you know, two million heavy drama. I mean, it's just not going to happen unless you're out, you know, if you're not in LA or New York, it just isn't, it doesn't work like that anymore. I guess. I don't know. Well, now with COVID, nothing, but I am. I can't wait for Broadway theater and theater to come back. I live for it. It's delicious for I me. I love you. It's one thing I never, ever, ever theater. I do not get. I can't go. I get. I respect the talent and I get it, but that's 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 so not me. But I mean, my you know, goal. Let me tell you right now. Wait. If one theater comes back, I am taking you to some good theater, and I'm going to change. I you, I've your seen the theater. Don't get me wrong. The very first, the very first theater production I ever saw in my entire life was a, a, a Othello at, at, Lincoln, <laughs> at Lincoln Center with James Earl Jones. Um, Amazing. Diane Weiss and Christopher Plummer. Ah. So, so where am I going after that? You know what I'm saying? What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna uh -huh. go, you know, I mean, you know. I'm a sucker for a musical, so. I, no, you know. no, no, you're not gonna happen. <laughs> I, 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 I think everybody go do theater. It's fantastic. It, I think it really, you know, invigorates. I get it. I see where, why sort of actors always come from that arena because it really does translate to sort of wealth and the technique and all that stuff. I get it, I understand it. I just don't want to watch it. I'm so sad you said that because yeah. I am a sucker for a musical. I have so many clients on Broadway or who have been That's on great. Broadway. No, listen, God bless. I think, hey, and, and, I, and I hope, uh, you know, I mean, I get really scared that it hopefully comes back and, and comes back, you know, and, you know, like a tidal wave because it's- Well, it's I do think, it's gonna come back. I think everything's gonna come back like a tidal wave because we were unaware of how uh, simple and wonderful our lives were and all the fun things we got to do and now we don't get to do it. So when it comes back, I think it, the ins inspiration that we feel that we wanna get from them, I think it's gonna come back so much. It might take a while, but right. yes, for sure. Well, I, I, I actually share that sort of vision, but I do think it's gonna take a while. Yes. Um, and I think it's a good way to, for actors to sort of take the time to sort of get, like you said, get to know themselves, get to know their relationships with other people and their connections and use that and really, really, you know, hone their abilities and really, really work on themselves and the craft. I think it's- Which think leads it's me to give some advice to actors out there that are just starting out or that are 
pursuing it now during COVID and feel alone and isolated? How do we reach you and give us some advice, some positive reinforcement, please? Um, how do they reach me specifically? Well, if they want to connect with you, are you open um, to that? I, I'm actually, you know, first of all, the, the, the connection that is, I'm, I'm big on, I'm big on Instagram for some reason. I think social media, I know people sort of hate it, but I think social media is actually a really good tool. It's it, it sort of replaced the, it's sort of the modern day postcard, you know, yeah. we send out postcards. You know, I never, ever, ever look on social media for a role. I'm never like, oh, I got to find something to go look. It never happens. But because I'm on it, mm. I sometimes get reminded of an actor. I'm like, oh my God, what about so-and-so for that role? That's a good idea. Yes. And so it just makes you sort of accessible and ability. And I expect actors to contact me and ask, you know, ask to follow me because you're acting. I'm a cast director. I get it. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. What's um, your Instagram handle? Let us know right now. Uh, so everyone... Michael Testa casting is oh. one. And then I have a personal one, Michael Testa, Michael Testa eight. I may not accept you on that one as, as much, but it's, I, I don't mind. Again, but I, do think, I, th I agree with what you say about uh, Instagram and the connection, because there's so much information they can get about you. Plus, plus um, you, right. you can but as, but see right. Absolutely. But you bring up a great point as an actor too, then you have to also be careful about what you put on there because yep. that is the calling card. That is representation of who you are. I always use the adage, if you, if you post every single day of you and of, of yourself and you're in a pink shirt every single day, my impression is that all you own is a pink shirt. So all of a sudden <laughs> you're the actress with the pink shirt. I don't know otherwise. So, you, know otherwise. You, want, you know, it's, it's, listen, you, you know, this is better than anybody. I mean, and, you know, by, because we've been in this for so long perception is reality in this business mm. it is um as much as you want perception is reality and you can i agree you know I agree. You can, I think you can manipulate your perception and i hate the word manipulate it sounds bad but you can give out the impression that you want on social media and it's also important for actors if you're going to be on there or not to have a message to have a platform of some something that you believe in to have that message, it can't only be about yourself because I'm sure if you see actors- No, it can't only be about yourself, but you have to be careful too, I think with the whole message thing, and I get it, and you don't want to express some people. Doesn't have to be political. political. Or, right, a little yeah. whatever it is. But understand too, because you have a platform that's going out to a wide, vast audience, not everybody's going to get it. And it's the same thing in terms of casting. Not every casting director is going to get you as an actor. They're just right. not. Right. You know, and I think it's, it's important to have your essence come through, what you believe in come through. Like it doesn't, I'm not talking about politics. I'm thinking about a bigger, a bigger right, right. right, right, right. And as we understand, like everything has, again, perception is reality. You, you have a way to sort yes. of make sure you put yourself out there. So you have to sort of, you know, you have to be, you have to be careful, but I do also think that you have to sort of, I personally believe it's gotta be any, whatever message you put out there, as long as it's positive, I just, I just think there's so much negative stuff going on in the world now with everything that it's just it all becomes to me it becomes like air pollution i always feel like every time i see a negative post from somebody about whatever it is oh um, i always go like oh you just you just you just lit a, a bomb of blue smoke up in the air now it's amazing. Yes. absolutely everything you post has to come from a positive standpoint one thousand million percent what else can actors be doing out there to keep um, messing up I, I also I think it's a great tape, it's a great way to sort of perfect yourself tapes to make sure they're a, they're good quality. You know, get your get your lighting together, get your sound together, where you're shooting it on, your background. I always I always think, and I'm not at all trying to undercut these classes at all because these are all good classes. I know some of the people here, and I've done it before, and they're, everybody's really on top of the game. But I've also been on the side teaching some other things, and what I was, one of the things I always teach is you know get yourself some wardrobe, get yourself. You know, get your wardrobe drawer ready to go. Know, you know what looks good on you because now it's really super important for actors not only to think of as actors, but you got to think of as, as as cinematographers now. You have to think as wardrobe people. You have to think about as producers, directors, and cast directors because you don't have them in the room with you giving you direction. So it's mm -hmm. it's way important for you to open up your eyes to all aspects of what this medium, um, mm -hmm. all aspects of what it, what, it, what it takes to make this medium come come to life. Mm -hmm. um, and now you do in terms of like a costume designer, know what colors work good on you, you know, and know how it reflects in the background that you do have, because it can make a difference. It's not going to make a break saying, you know, oh, I'm not going to give that person because she's not on a red shirt. It doesn't work that way. But you, all of a sudden, that red shirt can brighten up a scene. And if it's a sort of a brighter comedic scene, it, it lifts 
visually lifts whoever's watching their spirits. It's little things like that that you sort of have to sort of now take into account because of self tapes. But I would I would use this time to get that all down and straighten your head. Mm. So if you do have an audition for you know, a lawyer, you go right to your wardrobe drawer for self tape to go, okay, this jacket works really well. I mean, I'm going to put this on and I look really, you know, high powered and, you know, powerful in this, you know, whatever. So. I think so having the essence though, I don't, I don't like, don't go out and get a doctor's. No, 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 God, no, no, no. I'm not at all saying that. I have to get essence something, you know, but you know better than anybody, you know, you have a t-shirt on, you throw a sports jacket over that. All of a sudden you have a different impression. Now, all of a sudden I can be thought of more as a lawyer than just a t-shirt. I know? think what you're saying here is to be prepared because it's so much last minute to learn the text that if you have your other right. stuff, All that stuff ready to go. it's you're calmer and being calm and focused and being able to breathe through it alleviates right. another energy of tension that you don't want to have. Right. Again, use it all sparingly. Please do not go out and get a doctor's a lab coat or anything like that. Because again, me, I'm like, where do you get a lab coat? Hey, if you're <laughs> it takes you out. Although I will tell you one time when I was doing cold case, we, were doing, we did an episode about 60s stewardesses. Mm -hmm. And you know, back in that day, stewardesses and pilots were like considered elite. They were the, the, the really, you know, high class kind of, people always wanted to be them. And I had a pre-read and she came in with, she went out to a, a costume shop and bought the actual costume that Zoe Deschanel wore in Almost Famous at the end. Oh. And I looked at her, I'm like, oh my God, it's, it was such the essence of the time period that we were, it, like it worked. It just lifted her like right into that period. Honestly, I mean, I was doing something, she wasn't that great. I mean, I didn't love her as an actress, but I wanted the producers to see that, uh, you know, to get an essence, so I called her back. <laughs> it's so interesting. Just, costume, just wear that costume. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so basically, helps. you never know. You never know. But I think it is important for actors to know, just give the essence, do yeah, the yeah. work. The work is it's more right. And it's the same thing with a, sometimes with movement and you get a, a scene that's a lot of physicality. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, if you're in, a, in the middle of a fight, a fight scene, you don't have to, you know, bring every punch to life. You know, if you give some of the essence of it, the violence of it, like, you know, one little jerk, then you're, then you're done. Then you get yeah. it. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. One other positive piece of reinforcement for everybody before we close out. I just love it. Don't lose the love of this. This is, yeah. a, this is a fun job. It is a job, but it's a fun job. You know, I can't tell you how many actors I see on tape and in the room in the past where I, I can just see right off the bat that they don't love being it. They don't love this. Mm. They don't love the character. They don't love whatever it is. Mm. And again, perception is reality. And, you know, however you can fake it, fake it. You know, try not to sort of if you're intimidated by a scene, I, I have a lot of actors who sometimes send in self tapes with a little note. It's like, yeah, it's not as good as I could do, but uh, like, it's like, you're, you don't do that. You have no idea what I'm thinking. You can't control what I think is good or bad. So don't try to. That's right. But I do think that it's, that it's, it's a great period to reinforce and, and reiterate your love for your craft and what you do. And, um, get to know yourself, positive, uh, positive energy to get to know yourself, you know, and, also, you get to know other crap. Also, too, another thing, I think, positive thing to do, I think a very important thing is, is get to know different genres of, of material, romantic mm -hmm. comedies and, and, and the TV shows, because everything is different. Half hour, single cam, multi cam, get to know difference because when you go in addition for this, knowing that difference and knowing the subtle ways to enhance what you do to fit whatever you're, you're auditioning for is extremely important. I can't tell you how many times, like, oh my God, you're really funny for a multi cam show. We're, we're a single cam. There's a difference to all of it. So train, 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 right. train, train. Right. Of course, Absolutely. you know, here at Sherry Shaw Studios, but other, whatever works for yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely uh -huh. do it. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I've, I've, I've auditioned some of your students in the past and it's always, always been pleasant. You, you get the sense of, like doing this so long, you get a sense of where people are coming from and sort of the quality of, and I always get a sense from your place of, you know, actors are good and well-trained and, you know, just mm -hmm. having a blast too. Thank you so much. And it is true, but you have to know you have, it takes time and it takes practice. It takes time. It takes time. And it, 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 people think it's so easy to act because the good actors make it look easy because you got to do all the work and then let it go. Well, the, I always put it, I always put it, like, say, you're, you know, you're an athlete, you want to go to the Olympics. You know, all the people you see on screen and TV that are made it and are working, they're, they're, they're in the Olympics and you don't get there by just sort of like, you know, oh, showing up one day and saying, oh, I could do this. 
100%. train every day. Practice train like an athlete. Michael, thank, thank you so much. I appreciate you. your time so much. Thank and you. it was great getting to know you because I don't even know you. And now I feel like a little bit that I know you. So that's wonderful to me because I'm actually a very social person. I just like, I love the industry for because people in arts are open and available. It's very social, yeah, it's very social. I'm with you. I like, I like the whole aspect of it. You yeah. Know, meeting people and, you know, that's one, that's one of the pleasures of casting is I get to, you know, Hopefully on tape, I get to see, you know, 30, 40 people a day or yep. I didn't know before. Yeah, agreed. Thank yeah. you so much, everybody. Stay courteously aggressive. Train, train, train. Thank you so much. Stay safe out there. And we'll you see too. you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.